Okay, we just started to record this webinar. And now if I remember how to set up everything, it's a while since we've been making some webinars. So I need to remember how to set up this thing to let you hear computer audio. Okay, so can you hear me? Just let me know if you can, so we can eventually proceed with this webinar. Does the chat work for you? Can you write something in the chat? Okay, uh, it should work now. It should work now. And I don't know why it was disabled, never did something like that to explicitly disable that one. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we are quite a bit, we're 26 right now. I don't know if maybe we'll wait a couple of minutes more to see if uh, somebody else comes to this, uh, to this webinar. So, um, Please be patient because uh, I really don't remember <laughs> how to correctly set up everything. So um, hopefully when I share the screen, I remember which option I have to choose to allow you to hear the audio. Yeah, of course, of course, I have to do that. But I, if I'm not mistaken, I also have to choose the right device in the, in the door or the system. So, yeah, uh, I know, Tony, I'm sorry, uh, the chat was disabled, but um, it should be everything okay now. Okay, so uh, I don't think anybody else will come. We are, oh, we are 27 right now. One more person joined. So I think we can think about starting this webinar that is about uh, uh, our AutoGame Pro family. There are two plugins, two different plugins, AutoGame Pro and AutoGame Pro MK2. And uh, they are almost the same plugin, but the um, MK2 is more advanced and has a more flexible routing that helps you make more interesting tricks. For example, I'll show you how you can also use it as a transient designer. Um, but we decided to keep the original uh, AutoGame Pro on sale because uh, we thought that the MK2 was maybe a little bit too complicated for um, most people, so um, a more streamlined and easy plugin to get the same uh, results 
was a good thing to have. So if you don't need uh, the fl routine flexibility and mid-side processing that the MK2 has, the original Autogame Pro is perfectly fine. It does a perfect job. Well, Tony, uh, Tony Dawkins, I have Autogain, not sure how that differs from the Pro version. It's uh, very simple, the, the difference, uh, because the Pro version uh, has uh, the internal reference mode in addition to the standard external, so you can use it without sidechain. And it exposes all the parameters that inside the regular Autogain are hidden uh, in those three knobs. So you have more control on, um, on what it can do. I decided, not to, uh, I decided not to talk about the original Autogain because it's a very simple plugin. There is not really much that you have to say about it. So uh, I think it's more interesting to see how to use this Pro version, even also because uh, they are uh, what people prefer actually. So. Uh, we we received in the last uh, weeks uh, comments on YouTube and email still asking on how to use those plugins and how to route the signal through the plugins. So uh, I thought a webinar was a good idea on this. So I'm sharing my screen now and uh, hopefully I'll be able to let you see my Reaper session, share computer sound. Let me check if I have, no, I don't have the device here, but I should have it over here. Preferences, um, zoom uh, audio device. Okay. Let me know if you can still hear the sound. Can you hear that? That's for the fact that probably it's too much for the, my little Mac to handle, but uh, I'm, maybe I'm going to freeze uh, a couple of buses, so it works better. Um, let me freeze uh, the drums bus. Just freezing the, the drums should be enough to have uh, to have enough C CPU to handle this. Uh, without Zoom, the session was working perfectly, but probably uh, using a, a Zoom recording uh, the screen and everything was it's too much for the session. So just uh, have a little passion and we will have a working session, hopefully. We're almost done, I think. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, to show you how I arranged this track inside Reaper. Every door is different, but the concept are the same um, because I want to um, automate my vocals bus with the Autogame Pro to make sure that the vocal level is uh, always on top of the music level. So I have uh, all the music routed to one bus and all the vocals routed to another bus. Let's see if it's work now. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna show you is that uh, I have created one bus using folder tracks. This can be done in Reaper, probably in many other DOS. I have uh, created buses for all my groups, all my different instruments. So I have the drums bus, I have the guitars bus, I have my bass all alone because it's just a single track, and I have my keyboards on a different bus. Then 
everything here, all the music, is routed inside this folder track here. It could have been a, a, an aux send, but this way is far, is, it's easier, at least in Reaper, because, uh, um, because uh, uh, all the tracks go through this one track here. So I have just to set up one send and not a send for the music bus on every track. I have just to put them inside this folder track over here. So, um, uh, Martial Ruiz asked for if we are going to upload the webinar anywhere. Yes, sure, we are going to upload it to YouTube, so you will be able to find this webinar on uh, our YouTube channel later, uh, probably tomorrow. Uh, so, um, is everything uh, clear regarding the music routing? Do you have any question? Do you un did you understand how uh, this thing is arranged? So uh, the idea is uh, to put all everything that is not vocals inside one single bus so we can use uh, the send from this bus to drive the external sidechain in Autogame Pro. So if uh, I go to the mixer window you see that I have one send from here to the vocals bus from audio 1-2, there is the original stereo stereo channel, stereo output from for the, this bus, to 3-4, that is the side chain on uh, our Autogame Pro uh, because we have a stereo side chain. In Pro Tools, you only have a mono sidechain, but the idea is the same. You have to uh, create one, one uh, aux bus and then route everything there. So you, with, uh, with uh, another send from that bus, you can uh, uh, drive uh, the sidechain. Um, now, uh, I did the same for the vocals. All the tracks, all the vocals tracks are inside this Vox. Um, folder track over here, which right now has no auto gain on that, so it's going to sound like this. So now, we are going to automate that and uh, uh, using Auto Game Pro we are going to make it mm, follow the levels of, um, of the music. So I'll add the Auto Game Pro first. I'm going with the VST version because it's uh, the more tested one, let's say. Uh, it's not that the other version are not, are not tested, but I think in uh, Reaper uh, on Mac, VST, VST3 works better than audio units. That's my personal opinion, but anyway, um, I have a, uh, I'm an old person, and <laughs> I have a personal preference for the old VST formats. But anyway, apart from that, uh, we see here, we have uh, the default settings, which are to use the external reference, so the send that we set up in the first place here in the music bus, then we have a gate. Uh, the gate uh, uh, works uh, only on the internal reference and uh, uh, it's uh, um, a gate on the input signal. And if the signal is below this level, the plugin won't process the automation. So um, it's, it's a, a way to prevent uh, lower, very low levels to be risen, be, uh, risen up by this plugin and uh, create uh, uh, too many um, level difference in level which should not be there. Um, so okay, Ian, um, uh, does the plugin introduce less latency? No, these plugins are zero latency both because uh, they are based on, um, let's say, analog processing. Actually, um, inside this plugin, maybe an explanation is due. Inside this plugin, there are 
two different envelope followers that uh, works together and one is the on uh, the external reference and smooth out the music you have to use as a reference the other one is on the input uh, channels and uh, in this case smooth out the vocals and then you have two comparable levels these levels are, com are compared inside the plugin and uh, uh, the plugin tries to work on the input without touching of course the reference to make it at the same level of the reference so if it's lower get increased in gain if it's high if it's higher it get decreased in gain so um, this continuous adjust movement adjustment creates what uh, we can compare to uh, a fader move in the in the mixer because what you do when you ride your when you ride your faders is to move them so that uh, higher passage in the track you are automating uh, are not uh, too high respect in regard to the music that uh, you're automating to and uh, uh, softer passages don't get lost inside the music if it's too high so this is exactly the same idea and uh, it's made using uh, an analog approach so this thing uh, if you if we wanted could have been created in hardware and uh, if it would have worked the same so um, is zero latency for this reason and uh, what you have on the reference here if you use the external of course if you use the internal nothing of this gets activated because it's just a, a, a voltage let's call it a voltage level so it's a fixed level uh, which is used to compare uh, with, the, with, with the main uh, um, processing uh, path so uh, that the main processing path is kept at the level of the internal uh, fixed voltage uh, of the plugin. So when you activate the external input, you get an attack and release, which are the attack and release of the envelope follower, which is uh, used, used to smooth out the um, peaks uh, on, on the input. So if you have a very percussive and drumming uh, a song like this one you maybe want to have it a little bit faster to not lose uh, uh, the hits uh, on the, the drum so this is actually quite slow and I'm going to link first attack and release and I'm going to put it down to the VU meter standards that I found in my personal opinion are pretty good for this application so I want to have almost 300 milliseconds uh, between attack and release. Then what we have, we have an high pass filter and a low pass filter. Uh, these are very useful um, because uh, we don't want to have uh, uh, the, the reference react too much to the bus frequencies, uh, especially when you have uh, a more uh, dense song because uh, otherwise you probably would get a very bouncy automation. So uh, using the iPass filter, we'll cut out the bus frequencies and 100 Hertz is perfectly fine. Also, if you have a song that is too percussive or you have too much high frequencies, you can use the low pass filter to filter out all the eyes and uh, work only on uh, a mid range section of the song. This is a uh, strictly bound to your song to your application so for the moment I leave it to 2000 kilos so we don't have um, any we should not have an issue with this parameter set like this the gain level it's just uh, a gain adjustment for the reference before the processor so um, if you if the reference is too high you can lower it and if it's too low you can increase its level before being compared with the main uh, so this is something you of course you have to adjust uh, using the, 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 the spectrum the oscilloscope here so we have the white line is the reference view the level of the reference and the gain view is uh, the gain that is being computed so you almost want them to be 
bouncing around at the same level. Uh, then you can choose if you want RMS or peak. This is completely uh, depending on uh, the song and um, and uh, the the application. So uh, for this song, uh, my experiments, I have found that peak works better than RMS because it's it's a very fast song and RMS is really too slow and not giving me uh, the correct automation. So with peak, um, I can work uh, on uh, faster. Uh, on, on a faster level and so um, so um, so it can automate better this uh, this situation uh, reverts the reverts button simply reverses the gain so if uh, the comp gain computation uh, would have increased the gain if you press the reverse button. The gain is actually decreased. This is not useful for this application, but if you want to duck something like uh, um, a sidechain compressor, this is actually very useful. Uh, if, for example, you want to duck the bass with a kick, with the can you can do it using the reverse button. So when a kicks, when a kick hits. Uh, the gain of the bus would be, of course, increased, but since the red button is on, it's actually decreased. So you get uh, the effect uh, of a sidechain compressor uh, with uh, much more control than a compressor. So it's something that can be used, and uh, uh, I'm also using it on the AutoGame Pro and ChemKey 2 demo, demo 2, let you see, you see how it can be used as a transient designer. Uh, the classic button disable everything and transforms the auto game pro in the regular auto game so you only have the same parameter that you have in the regular auto game um, then you have the mean gain and max gain this is the range on, of the gain the, the gain adjustment so um, if uh, you leave it to the default which is the maximum load allowed for um, Auto Game Pro, you get a maximum and minimum adjustment of 12 dBs. And if you want, you can, of course, decrease it so you never have more than 3 dB of adjustment, 4, 5, 6, or whatever. And of course, you can unlink it if you want to reduce more gain than uh, you are allowed to increase. So this gives you more flexibility. And the gain scaler is um, the same parameter you have in the original Auto Gain and allows you to scale uh, the gain computed internally by a certain amount. This is a percentage, so um, this is in this moment, by default, I set it to 50%, to 50 so if the gain computed would have been 6 dBs, uh, the gain is actually 3 dBs, so, and so on. Um, this is because 100% sometimes is too much, uh, and uh, the, the gain adjustment is too jumpy, so putting it at 50% is usually fine, but uh, this is of course bound to the application, so you have to, to test it and see how it works in your context. Then we have the automation options here. Right now we are in ignore, so uh, we don't write any automation to the dough, and we don't listen from any, for any automation from the dough. So the processor only works as a standalone processor um, and uh, works on input and uh, sidechain and uh, ignoring everything. If we are happy with the settings and we want to uh, crystallize them on the DAW, we can choose the right option that allows the plugin while processing to send the DAW automation data regarding the movement of this arrow here. This arrow is the gain. So um, these movements get written to the automation lane on the dough and uh, it can be then copied to the fader or using inside the AutoGame Pro setting it to read. When you set it to read, no processing is done at all and only uh, the gain is adjusted listening to, from, to the automation coming from the dough. So it's a way to save uh, CPU, for example, uh, or a way to read something that you have fixed 
uh, by hand in a certain part where maybe the automation was not with the um, the gain computed by the plugin was not perfectly right and uh, uh, you have wrote in you have wrote to the automate to the dough then you have fixed by hand and then you with the read option uh, the fixed automation is written it's read sorry by the the auto game pro so tony asks if it is it best to let the plugin write the automation or just run it live each time it depends, Tony, uh, because uh, uh, usually um, for what I've used, I usually set it to ignore and let it write, let it uh, compute everything um, in live every time. But uh, I have I had some um, some cases where you have a, maybe you have a, think about it, you have a one po pause in a song, one stop and the vocal kicks in just a little bit before the music starts. Uh, this lets the plugin rise the volume of the, of the, of the attack of the vocals and then lower it down drastically when the music starts. So this is not what you want. And in this case, for example, you write the automation and fix this thing manually and then leave uh, the rest as it's computed. Uh, this is one of the uh, one, one thing that happened to me, so I I found that it can be useful in this case. Maybe it's more useful if something is not working, like in the example, than anything else. But uh, somebody told me a uh, time ago that he likes to write the automation, then copy the automation lane on the on the uh, fader automation of the track, and remove the plugin to save CPU. So it's uh, it's really up to you. Um, then we have finally the main controls. These are the envelope follower for the input signal to the Auto Game Pro, and allow us to uh, shape the envelope of, uh, of the main signal we are going to to automate. So, also in this case, I love to keep it shorter, and uh, something like this may work. So if uh, I press play now, I'll adjust the gain level knob to uh, make these two chords uh, work together and be almost at the same level. Similiano, setting the min and max gain to 12 minus negative 12 and gain scalar to 50 is the same as setting min and max to 6 and negative 6 and scalar to 100. Uh, theoretically, yes. Practically, not. Because uh, the scalar acts uh, on the level of, um, of, this, of, of the envelope followers. Um, so... Um, the velocity, the speed at which the gain increase or decrease changes, changing the scalar. Um, so I'll let you, I'll let you show, let you see that maybe uh, it's a better explanation. <laughs> Yeah. I set it to negative six. Now, I want to set it to 12 and to 15, to 50 over here. And than uh, having uh, the full uh, scale happening because uh, 
uh, as I told you, it also uh, affects the speed at which it reaches it reach the, um, the, the, the ceilings. So it's, uh, it's different. You have, to, um, you have to work. Usually I le leave it to its default setting here because I never needed anything different from, from this. But of course, it's uh, an option. So the pro version of the auto gain is meant to allow you to experiment with internal parameters. So if you want, you can experiment with that. Uh, now, let me create something that can be listened to. Okay, fine. It's um, Tony. If, for example, you want the vocal to be five dB louder than the instrument, is the max gain that controls this? No, these are actually ceilings. So it's the maximum and minimum level that the gain can reach before being capped. So if um, the Computer gain would have been, uh, for in this in this example, would have been um, 20 dB, for example. Uh, it would have been capped to 12. So you have seen you would have seen a flat line over here in the in the gain view. So if you want uh, that option, you better um, be making the yellow line jump at around the zero over here, and then when you are working on the zero, you can simply take the fader for the, your vocal drum bus, your vocal bus, and rise it by 5 dB. So it's easier to work like this. You have seen I've uh, um, slowed down, I've slowed down uh, the attack and release on both my main and uh, reference uh, tracks because I was seeing that it was working too fast. Yes, yes, Tony. The plugin itself levels out the overall low of vocals above the rest of the mix. That's the, 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 the way it's designed and it's meant to work like this. Uh, you are you want to have uh, the main the main over here to be at around the same level of the reference then with this control you uh, decide if you want it to be higher or lower than the reference and uh, um, I could have uh, could have choose the RMS for this but I'll show you when I select the RMS uh, since uh, before actually applying attack and release, uh, those two, the input and output, are um, passed through uh, an RMS calculator. So you already have a window with section, a window with sound, um, sorry, control, that is already very smooth. So if I select RMS, I obtain a different uh, result. I'll take, put everything very fast to show you that is the. Uh, 
all these small movements here does not appear. These actually are the drum hits and um, they, they, they won't appear with the RMS detector. <laughs> So, uh, I did the explanation work. Have you understood everything about uh, the, the way I use the plugin to smooth out vocals? Well, uh, Tony, in which, uh, what scenario would RMS be a better choice than peak? Usually is a better choice than peak, uh, especially for vocals. When you have uh, um, a song that is not the punky, is, uh, 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 for example, uh, the classic dance song or the classic uh, rock ballad, it's better to use RMS because you have uh, a more relaxed drum beat you have more space between uh, one hit and the other. You don't have that, uh, um, that, that narrow space between the snare hits. So usually it's a better choice, RMS. It's what the original Autogain uses, for example. And uh, it's better to use that than uh, the peak. But in this particular circumstance, I have chosen this song to show how peak works better than RMS. Uh, it's better to use peak because uh, um, when the vocal stops and uh, it gets the, the volume gets rising up to zero once again, with the RMS it's too slow and uh, when the next word comes in, the next phrase comes, comes in, it's still low and doesn't have enough time to recover and start again to the right level. So uh, using the peak uh, detector can avoid this issue. Then you have a course to smooth attack and release. I have started with fast attack and release uh, because I wanted to see how fast could I have, could I, I go before without getting a, a too jumpy and pumping effect on the vocals. And I also increased the gain scaler because uh, the movement that I was getting in this uh, with this setting was really low, at around uh, two two dBs or something like that. Uh, while I wanted to go a little bit higher and lower to uh, have this thing uh, work better. Um, I don't know if... Uh, I like, yeah, Melim, uh, would I look ahead also make sense? I don't know, honestly. Uh, I haven't designed that with the look ahead and I don't know how it could be... Yes, of course, the look ahead added, added latency, but I don't know if this is, could uh, really be useful in this context because we don't have a look ahead is very useful when you have a limiter or a ball limiter or a very fast compressor uh, because uh, the attack time get, get increased in quality because you have a very, very fast attack time, you are going to have um, quick, very fast, quick jump in the gain. And these actually create a discontinuity in the signal that translates in uh, um, infinite harmonics being generated for a very small period of time. And this also creates a large amount of al al aliasing distortion for that small amount of time. For this reason, look ahead improves that much um, a limiter and a fast compressor like the 1176 uh, but in my opinion honestly I prefer to use a higher sampling than a look ahead 
because oversampling can be done uh, without creating the latency that Luca had creates. Uh, for example, we have uh, an eight, an eight uh, times oversampling in uh, our latest plugin and only at 10 samples of uh, um, latency. So uh, it's, very, it's a very short uh, amount of samples of latency that is perfectly reasonable in a live situation, something that with a look ahead you cannot do. Uh, would you always, uh, Tony, would you always put the drums in with the other instruments and sidechain, or could you leave the drums out and just have the other instruments sidechain the vocals? Um, well, I usually put everything because that's what I would do if I would have ride, if I was writing the fader by hand. I don't do that by listening only to bass, guitar and keyboards or whatever other instruments you have. Uh, I do that in context. So uh, using uh, the, the drums together with the, with, the other, with the other tracks. So I never try that, honestly. Um, because uh, it makes sense to recreate what I do when I write the faders. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it's the natural way of thinking, I think. Um, it's not 10 milliseconds, it's 10 samples. It's a much shorter time. Uh, consider that if you have uh, a 4K, 4, 4, 4K uh, sampling rate, uh, 10 samples is a completely something that you can completely forget, it's almost real time. Uh, Tony, this version is the Autogame Pro, not the MK2. Um, now, I'll show you how to write the automation, uh, but of course it changes from dough to dough, so this you have to adapt this to your dough, to your dough choice. So what I'm going to do is to, and then I'll show you the M key too. Uh, what I'm going to do is to use the right option here. Then, um, with the right option enable, I'll go to my automation button and I'll put it on right also here. So if I press play now the automation is getting written. so if I now set it to trim red and to red here I can read back the automation that is being written for example this is clearly an error I don't want this gain jump here, so I delete it. And now it's not present anymore. So here it is. Um, I have my automation and of course I can edit and make it what I want. So. If, for example, I want this part here to be higher, I can take its point and draw whatever I want, and the plugin will follow. See? So it's, uh, it's like uh, drawing the, re the regular automation, but you have uh, something that is uh, it's a, a starting point generated by this plugin. So um, you can now. Uh, fix or change the automation the way you want. Uh, but, and if I set it back to ignore, even if the automation is there, the plugin starts making again, and, uh, working like if the automation was present. One other thing we can do is, for example, uh, we don't have a. Let's, let's pretend this is a voiceover. I want to put it in solo. And we don't have any music backing that. We want the, um, the vocals to be as more stable as possible. And what, I, what, I, what we do is to set the reference to internal and the gate to a more reasonable level, level, let's say negative 40 dB. So anything below 40 dB is ignored by the processing. 
and uh, everything above is uh, uh, processed and uh, adjust so that uh, it's uh, Almost at this level over here. So, c'è chi sostiene che la guerra sia un'arte. Per me solo una grossa merda che troppo spesso dall'America parte. Come Corrado e i fascisti su Marte. Vado nel mondo da Salvatore mischiando le carte. Colonizzatori sempre più buoni, padroni. Ma con la faccia ci mettono avanzando con i droni e chi conquistatori. Col fare da cafoni, ma ti mettono un po' di sogni. Questa è la questione delle questioni. Non sono le posizioni, ma le posizioni che ti scambiano le direzioni. Come quando non sono Uh, expanded, so it's like having a, uh, a very uh, smooth and uh, very controlled uh, compressor. It's not like a compressor, of course, you don't have the same effect, same uh, um, feeling as the compressor, but if you have something that is very dynamic and uh, uh, you, have, you can use this trick to fix it before feeding it to a compressor so that you have a, a more stable um more stable sound uh, reaching the compressor. If I put this plugin before my compressor now, we are, remember, we are at around zero, so uh, it's uh, almost the same level as if I did not had Auto Game Pro in place, and the compressor works like this. If I disable the plugin, you see how the compressor works more. You see how it works now, and if I bring it back on, it works much less and it's more controlled, because Autogame Pro smooths out the signal before reaching the compressor, this is another trick you can use with this plugin. Um, Jose, yes, uh, uh, is there any chance to have the meeting recording? That would be great. Yes, I told it at the beginning of the, um, of the webinar. Uh, everything is being recorded and will be uploaded to YouTube uh, in the next days, so of course you can uh, watch it later. So this trick of course can be also made with the Autogame Pro M key 2 and I'm going to use this plugin now. Uh, let's remove that plugin and replace it with uh, Autogame Pro M key 2. As you can see from the plugin window, it's already more complex than uh, the original auto game. Uh, Tony, what's changed uh, in the MK2 version? Uh, the MK MK2 version has the same algorithm inside. It works exactly the same processing wise, but it adds uh, uh, um, even more flexibility and controls. Um, basically, it was designed to have uh, mid-side uh, uh, capabilities. But while designing it, uh, I, asked, I found that it could have been useful to have detector and processor modules separate. So uh, you can route one detector to one processor or the other, one detector to both processor, uh, one uh, detector for the side, uh, one detector for the mid to one processor and the other. So you could process mid side differently or you can process only the mid side and leaving the, uh, leaving the, side, uh, the, the mid part, sorry, leaving the side unprocessed. Uh, so you can change the levels uh, in, the, uh, in the center of your stereo image while letting them flow on the stereo or do the opposite. If you have uh, something that is very dynamic in the stereo, you can bring them, to bring the stereo image to be more uh, stable while having dynamics in the mid. And uh, this, of course, this flexibility uh, creates a more complex interface and a more complex user user flow. So, uh, if you don't have, you don't need this kind of uh, uh, of, of things. Uh, you are better with the original Autogame Pro, uh, but of course the MK2 can do any everything that the original Autogame Pro can do, plus uh, more. Uh, it's just that you have to um, have a mind that is more uh, accustomed to, let's say, synthesizers, because you have a routing here. 
So you have to choose uh, uh, one sort, one modulation and something like that. It's more like uh, a, a modulation matrix in a synthesizer. Um, so what we have here, we also have presets in this plugin because for this uh, added complexity, it, was, it made sense to provide some starting points, some presets to show how the plugin could work. Um, then we have the same automation option, ignore, read and write. We have the mode classic, it works like the original auto gain, not the auto gain pro, but the original auto gain. It's the simpler possible way to use this plugin. Then we have stereo. In stereo mode, you have uh, the processor work like the first on the left part of the signal and the second on the right part. Uh, and you can also decide to drive to drive this processor with two different signals. So you can um, make a different gain adjustment to left and right part of the, of the stereo image. Um, by default, it gets as a reference the detector one, that is, which is this model here. You could have uh, also select none as the detector and the processor would simply not work. Or you choose detector one, for example, detector two, maybe for the, uh, uh, of course, detector is disabled. Um, it don't work in stereo mode, maybe I remem don't remember correctly how it works. Okay, no, the detector in the stereo mode, sorry, I forgot how it works. The detector in the stereo mode are linked, so uh, you have to choose between detector one and detector two. It's the mid-side option that allows you to choose a completely different routing for detector and processor. So if, for example, I want my side option to be a RAM as mode, uh, the mid-side as peak mode, um, and uh, drove by the internal fix for the side while external um, external mid for uh, the, 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 um, the mid so you can of course create everything creates something that uh, mangles gain in many different ways um, but I start showing you showing you some presets so this was a meant to work as a uh, meant to be used as a way to make this bass sound more steady because you have an internal fixed res reference we're working in stereo mode we have an internal fixed res reference a negative 60 db gate and uh, then we have h pass filter not activated not engaged because we want to work on the bass sound so we want everything we want uh, a quite slow attack and release time for the detector. This is a level of, of course, you have to adjust. And then we want uh, to ignore the high frequencies. So we have a low pass filter at three kilohertz. And then we want to use the RMS mode because the bus is a very slow kind of sound. So, um, you don't want to, we want it to move faster, we have to stabilize that. And uh, we don't want to have a big uh, uh, jump in gain. And also we want to have a slow uh, attack and release time for the processor. And if I put now this plugin on the bass track, let me first, it's better if I do like this, if I pass it over here and use the same on the bass track. Um, let me find it. Here it is. And I use this preset, bass steady. Now, I'll set it in solo mode. C'è chi sostiene che la guerra sia un'arte Per me solo una grossa merda Che troppo spesso dall'America parte Come Corrado e i fascisti su Marte Vadono il mondo da salvato Ok Here we have Only the bass sound And it's already working 
but I adjust it to have around 0 dB, 0% sorry, gain adjustment. Like this. So it's very smooth. Make it a little bit faster. So you see we have lower notes that are higher in volume than higher notes. These allow us to automate and create a more stable. If I disable that, you see it's a much more or less full signal. It is like it's being compressed with a ge very gentle compressor and uh, it's more manageable now. Um, Ian, what the reverts do? Like inverts the signal? No, it actually reverses the gain. So if I press it now, you see we get gain reversed. So um, when it would have been decreased, it gets actually increased and vice versa. So it's like uh, reversing the, the complete gain. In this case, low, higher notes in, uh, in gain are played even higher than it's not what we want, of course, but uh, it's uh, an, another option that you can use. And the reverts button is also available in the original AutoGame Pro. So, if I put it now before the compressor, like for the vocals before, you see that. Oh, sorry, I have to adjust the levels. See if I can get around zero. Here I am. And uh, now the compressor is working less than. Uh, if I disable the Auto Game Pro, the compressor works more than if I enable it. It's a more steady signal and uh, it's clearly an improvement. Lower notes get simply fixed by this plugin. So, um, yes, it, I am, it's, a, it's, it's a design tool. So, you can we design that thinking about ducking a compressor. So, if I, for example, instead I change this and instead of using the internal fix, I choose the um, external mid. If I choose the external mid and I set uh, the um, kick, look, where is the kick? Where is the kick drum? I set the kick as a send for the bus on channels, um, on channels two, three, and four. Now I set the kick as external reference for AutoGame Pro, okay? If I press play now, I'm in solo, so I need to put the kick in solo. The gain is adjusted using the kick signal as reference. I'm adjusting the input gain, so it gets, it start working. So the, the gain is now adjusted according to the level of the kick. So every time the kick hits, the gain is increased. Now, if I want to have a ducking effect, I simply put press the reverts, and I have the opposite. So every time the kicks hit, the gain is reduced. So I, I have a sort of a ducking compressor. Of course, I have to adjust the attack and release times. You 
see you don't have kick here this is drastic of course but it's just to show you instead of RMS you have to choose pick so you see you are getting a ducking effect uh, so every time that the sidechain kicks in the level is decreased instead of increasing so we have so many other projects uh, yes Tony uh, basically the Autogame Pro MK2 uh, is uh, much more versatile and for example it allows you to have uh, to create something like um, transient designer with a pick and answer for example we are using a, a special source that is the internal meet uh, that means that uh, the same signal that is used for uh, the processor is used as the detector so it's like having a compressor with the, uh, working on the same signal on the detector and the processor mm. But since we are having two different um, envelope followers with a slightly different attack time, we are actually isolating transients and uh, uh, using it with um, the regular operation or with the reverse operation allows you to increase or decrease the transients. So I'll show you how this works on the full music bus let me just uh, put it in solo and if I add now Autogame Pro and Key 2 and I choose pick an answer what I have here, we, the trick is having uh, the detector with 1 milliseconds of attack time while the processor with 40 milliseconds attack time this difference uh, is applied, of course, these two envelopes are applied to the same, sim to the same signal because we're using the internal mid, that means uh, the mono uh, input signal, the input signal is stereo, but it's, they get summed and make mono. Um, we are using the same signal on the two processor, uh, but with a slightly different attack time. This isolates transients, and if I press play now, You know, listen how much uh, the transient are increased if I reverse that they are being decreased and of course changing this parameter changes the length of the transient being analyzed This does nothing because they have the same attack and release time. But as soon as I increase that, for example, this is uh, like having a very squashy compressor. While this drastically increases the peaks, and reduce the um, uh, level of the music behind the drums if you go higher than this you see you are starting to miss every hit and enhancing just certain transients So this is another nice trick that you can do with Autogame Prime Key 2 and if you don't have a transient designer but you have this plugin and you have something that must be fixed because it has too much transients or uh, too less, too few transients, uh, you of course can do that with the Autogame Pro and Key 2, not with the regular Autogame because it doesn't have the internal mid or external side. Uh, the, in the internal side. This is interesting because using the internal side we can use only the difference between left and right channel to drive 
uh, this uh, um, transient designer. So let's see what happens. For example, uh, in this case, have you heard, since the kick is just in the center of the mix, it passes unprocessed. The peaks in the, in the, um, the kick doesn't get, com are completely ignored, while the snare that has a reverb and is also on the panoramics, um, microphones, uh, uh, is um, used as a, as a, as a, uh, a sidechain for uh, peak reduction or um, increase. Uh, this is interesting because I have used the side, the internal side, as a, a source. Um, it changes completely how the plugin works. Also, we can, uh, with this preset, for example, uh, we can create uh, a more pumping effect. Uh, um, on, uh, uh, it's, it's like having the pumping effect of the dance music because uh, I have chosen the external mid as a source. If I, for example, drive this, um, this plugin with a, with a kick, I can get the pumping effect or a steady center. And now I choose the internal fix for the detector and these allow me to uh, just uh, change the level of the of the center of the stereo image and leave the the, the, the stereo the stereo side unchanged so uh, it gets stabilized in the, in the center and more airy uh, on the um, on the side this has the effect of increasing the stereo image without actually increasing uh, the phase correlation uh, stereo answer does exactly this and uh, it's preset tailored for that. I want to, to make you listen to that because it's interesting. You see how it gets wider. But it's not simply blindly wider. It's wider uh, when you have, uh, when uh, the um, when the low level of the, um, the site is lower than the reference we choose here. So if we want to make it even wider, I simply have to change the level over here. So this is another very nice effect and if I want to make it more drastic I can use the peak detector You hear how the keyboards get wider and uh, the snare gets more airy and it's a, it's a nice effect to use. Of course this graph over here shows you the gain that is being applied uh, with a blue and a yellow line and the level of the detectors which are now turned off but if for example I turn this on and I put it to internal mid, I'm going uh, randomly 
I can change the correlation between the median and, si and the side. So this the side option is going to work uh, with the internal mid uh, and I want to reverse that with a high scale, high, very high gain adjustments. While I want, for example, the mid to be more stable, so peak, scalar 100%, reverse. Let's see what happens. you can manage uh, uh, the stereo image, the width of the stereo image and uh, how the width is width is uh, um, moving with, uh, with what happens in the center uh, with a high flexibility. So it's uh, also um, a very handy mastering tool to have uh, to increase the perceived stereo image without having actually to um, create problems with the correlation between left and right because if you simply increase the level of the side, uh, if you use mid-side processing and you increase the level of the side or reduce the level of the mid, and sometimes, especially with low frequencies, you may have correlation issues. But since here we have an HPF filter and a low-pass filter, we can only decide to listen to certain range to enhance the stereo image in certain frequency range, um, in a certain frequency range, or uh, just when uh, a, scene, a certain level is crossed. So we have a lot of flexibility uh, with the stereo image with this plugin, and uh, of course we have the stereo reducer presets and also the vocal steady preset. It's like the bass steady, but with the um, HPF uh, tailored to the vocals and also the ranges and attack the release time tailor it to the vocals so it's, this is very useful if you are uh, making voiceovers for example and you want to have reduced the level the work that the compressor has to do and if you stabilize that before with plugin like I show you I showed you before uh, it can help you have a more stable signal without having uh, to jump uh, to make the compressor work that much. So, these are uh, the AutoGame Pro and AutoGame Pro MK2. Uh, let me know if you have any question. And I think I've shown you uh, everything that the plugins can do and uh, how uh, they differ between each other. So, if you have any question, just let me know and I'll be happy to answer. Tony, did the email say you are sending a dysfunction voucher towards the plugin? Yes, um, the, the email will be sent automatically by Zoom and you will, had, you will have a discount code on the email that can be used to get any of the plugins. So uh, you will get, I don't remember actually if it's 10% discount or something like that, and uh, you will uh, be able to get the plugin with a discount code. Tihai, yes, I told, I, I already said that uh, a couple of times. Uh, the, um, this webinar is being recorded, so it will be available on YouTube in um, the next days. I don't know exactly when. Hi, Daryl. You're welcome. Um, I'm happy if it uh, helped you understand better how to use this plugin and how they are meant to be used and the philosophy behind them. Uh, because the difference uh, is not uh, obvious to anyone, to everyone, and we get quite an amount of question asking the difference between these two plugins. So I'm happy. I'm happy if you are happy. <laughs> and um, the, the the hardest part to grasp for the most person is the routing needed to make this work. But I think that everything is clear to you. Uh, so the, the aux buses and sand and, uh, and return and everything like that. 
Hi Randy, uh, no, no need to be sorry if you are late and uh, you will be able to watch the webinar on YouTube. So we are, I think if you, there is no question, there are no questions, I'll stop the webinar now because uh, it's uh, dinner time over here. So I don't know which, uh, what time is where in your part of the world, but anyway, have uh, uh, a nice rest of the day or the night or the morning or whatever and uh, thank you very much for for taking part of this for being part of this and of course if you have questions suggestion uh, our email is there you can write me directly to severio.vigny at honorplugins.com of course you can find my email anywhere so thank you very much once again, have a, a nice rest of the day. Bye.